Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I'm a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on July 10th, 2022 at approximately 6.20 p.m. PFC. Well, apparently my throat's going to be having fun today, but in any event, finally got back into the real swing of, of writing and editing in the whole nine yards. I run through complications now and then. But here's the reality behind it. When you've got a project that you really desire to get done, pick the project, break it down into smaller pro into smaller tasks, and get on it. If you end up getting uh, running into a little bit of a hiccup, that's okay. Okay, we're this is an issue of being in it for the long haul. Now, right now, I've got 208 pages of return of the Return to Paradise written. I started this morning by going reading back through it to make minor changes to tie tie off loose ends and what have you. And as of right now, I am reaching the bottom of page 33. Now, as you can see, that means at that pace, I could quite conceivably be right up to date with the fan with that side of it by the end of this week, by the end of the coming week. Now. We're looking at realistically aiming to get things and to get your financial world back on track. Now it's all interlinked: your finances, the state of your of your home, and the state of your health. It's all tied together. Okay, it just boils down to breaking it down into smaller tasks so you can keep an eye on it. Now for me, it's pretty. It's a pretty cut and dried setup. You know, I don't feel like I'm doing a whole lot. I'm only in the process of writing 31 books at the same time from five different genres. Okay, not to mention, I've just been handed an interesting, or more to the point, I just took on an interesting task of building a world to run a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. Okay, to give the current Dungeon Master a, a little bit of a break. He's been running solid games for the last year and a half, two years. It's time he got a chance to play the game. Now, of course, we have to remember on top of that, I've still got the reunion that I've got ahead for. Well, technically, I don't have to, but you can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to. And yes, I missed doing a post yesterday, but a video that I did that I that myself and two of my classmates did in back in grade eight, I believe, should have been grade eight. Okay, is finally in the shop being being transferred on the disc. Now, with that in mind, it's going to be another four to six months before I'll actually get to see it. Because of the tech at the time, it was done with no with no sound, as far as I'm aware. I don't know. Maybe it had sound. We'll find out. Okay. I remember very little of it, but I, of what we actually filmed at this point, but then I haven't looked at it in 50 years, so that might explain that. Well, 45 anyway. So, if you, did I actually do that? I don't think so. Okay, where's my list? Because, like I said, the best thing I ever did for myself, well, one of, one of the key factors to make things work right that I found was this. You take you take a sheet of paper and mark down the list. Mark down on it a list of the different goals you have. I believe in, in odds and ends, in having odds and ends. I believe, you know, playing cards are a good thing. So I got a special deck, they're gold plated. As I've told as I've told people before, I might have mentioned it to you guys. You know, I don't, I don't, it's not that I don't like the finer things in life. Quite frankly, I do. I just don't like paying full price for them if I can avoid it. Now, I'm in the process of doing the journey, so that's okay. Just no noise going on outside. Get that posted. Why, uh, Elder Box 12, I'm dealing with. I've got a number of things that I have to get done at this point. Okay, but from your standpoint, if you haven't done it, what have we got, the financial signing? This is a live recording in case you hadn't pieced it together. Okay. You know, we didn't say, and that's okay. 
Um, which means I get down this, I double check the date, and I post it as is. Okay. Now, here's the neat little thing about it. Okay, I don't claim to be perfect, but I came back to this world for one primary purpose, and that is to remind virtually everybody that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everybody to live in. Of course, the reality is you're going to have to do your part. So I'm certainly calling upon you and asking your help to spread the word to everybody you know. Do give us a thumbs up if you like the, if you like our like the channel. Do subscribe so you get the rest of the message of the messages coming up. We've got a lot of work to do, and it really is time to get off our tail feathers and do it. And by the way, that message is more for me than it is for you. Uh, okay, from my end, it's a real simple issue. Um, there's a lot that has to be changed. We're going down the same path right now, okay, that we went down 2,000 years ago. And, by, well, 1,700 years ago. 2,000 years ago was another neat little fiasco. Okay, there was one event that took place 2,000 years ago that lots of people argue about whether it happened or didn't. You know, frankly, I'm not interested in the general in the general take on it at this point. My memories, much as this lifetime, they're a bit of a shambles. You know, I don't remember things as well as I'd like, but I do remember them. Okay, like for instance, you know, when we take a look at birth times, I was and see, I'm I'm not I'm not old by any means. I'm aiming to get a whole lot older. Hopefully, I'm not half as old as I will be when I pass away. But I was born approximately 2 p.m. in the uh, approximately 2 p.m. in the afternoon of May 13th, 1963. I walked out of the morgue at approximately 4:14 p.m. in the afternoon. Well, 4:14 p.m. 4:14 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Out, out of Nanus Bay. Okay, out of a out of a complex, out of the morgue in the Nanus Bay. Okay, so, you know, I can tell you, I know at, roughly speaking, approximately 5 p.m. on July 4th, 1975, I hit the concrete at, in, in, on a, from a pedal, on a, from a bicycle. Okay, at approximately 25 miles an hour. Okay, onto concrete and gravel, and just absolutely decimated my right leg. Net result, I'm still walking around on a cane. Okay, but these are only rough, and these are only approximate time frames. Okay, I have the same issue with many of my past lives. Okay, although not quite down to the time, because at that time, yeah, you know, when I take a look back at 18, 1828, Okay, um, in 1828, I watched my girlfriend get pushed off a cliff. As it turned out, as I found out after I got down to her, she was, you know, she was with child. And quite frankly, she was with our child. Okay, and then five years later, I went up to the same hill I can lay down and shut my heart off. Okay. So, when I'm talking about memories, there are some things that come out real clearly. Okay, I do know I was born in 19... In 19... Uh, well, no, sorry, in 1898. And I was born in 1898 in Chicago Memorial. My, many years later, 1956 to be exact, I laid down in the hospital and died of old age. I said, you know, quite frankly, I'm pretty certain there were other reasons for it, but I ended up passing away in the hospital. Okay. My memories back when I was, when I was way back in past lives, I also remember time, remember events, days, that sort of thing. Now, I'm not asking you to believe it by any stretch. What I am asking you to pay attention to is the fact that the history books, the way they are written, have some pretty critical flaws in them. Okay, and right now we are walking down the same path to the same outcome that we did back in Rome. Okay, and I tried warning the people when I was a senator 
in about, I guess it would have been about four, about 420-ish. Well, probably around 400. Okay. Um, I've got to look back at that one. Okay, but I tried telling the senators then they were going down a very bad path. Because at that time, the people in charge were treating the rest of the people like garbage. They were treating their, their friends like gold. But they were absolutely overtaxing, over, they were abusing them as far as laws went. They were just treating them horribly. The same thing is going on today. Okay, and I tried warning them back then that this was going to result in a disaster. And I'm passing on this exact same message now. We have to look at the reality of it. Now, to start with, we are not raising children. Nobody's raising children. What we're actually raising, we're caring for children, but we are raising adults. These are the people that have to get the message that we've got to do things better this time than we did. They've got to do better than we have done. Because this idea that we can let a war continue when war has never brought peace, ever. Take a look through all of history. Yes, war comes to an end and people celebrate it for a day or two. But if it actually brought change, we wouldn't end up going back into war every time we turn around. Okay, war brings quiet. Because quite frankly, if somebody's shooting at you, the odds are you're trying to keep quiet so they don't find you. Okay, we have to realize that, people, that it is possible to change this. But you got to take into consideration that if we do not start maximizing the positive, Point out the things that are doing people are doing well. For instance, okay, I'm watching the world evolve. Well, in my eyes, it's actually devolving in a lot of ways. But there are some phenomenal things being done. Medicine, is, you know, medical techniques are improving. And we're not going to bother worrying about how horrendous it was. Because I'll tell you, much as I've complained about the medical society, the medical profession this lifetime regarding me, I will tell you, the medical profession back in and during the Black Plague, during the Black Death, was absolutely appalling. Okay, all we basically could do is watch people suffer and die. And we didn't get to watch it very long. Okay, nowadays... We actually are making headway, but we got to get it through our heads that, that much as modern Western medicine, i.e. chemical compounds and what have you, work. you got to remember that doesn't mean the natural methods don't work. Or, as people call them, the metaphysical methods, which have to be older than the other two combined. Okay, we've got to realize that these are all part and parcel of a much bigger picture. Okay, I like the way it was pointed out in Doctor Strange when when the, the one known as the Ancient One stated that the, the MRI, the picture of chakras, the pictures of the nervous system are just little pinholes, they're just little keyholes that see part of the picture. It's the same thing just an interesting aroma. It's the same thing with modern medicine. Western society handles part of it. Herbalistic approaches handles another part. Yeah, okay, and they're both very good methods. Okay, naturopathic methods handle handle things another way. Now, if they're all effective on their own, okay, to one degree or another, imagine how effective they will be when we start putting them all together. Okay, it's very much like teaching. Some people learn by uh, by watching. Some le learn by listening to somebody tell them how to do something. Some people learn by reading. And other people learn by physically doing it. Okay. Now, if all of these methods are effective in their own way, picture what happens when we put them all together and make them make an effort to combine the methods. Okay. By no means am I perfect. 
by no means have I got all of the answers. Or if I do, I certainly don't recall all of the answers. What I do know is that when we take all of these things and combine them together, the biggest thing that I found, one of the biggest things I found out was the two most wasted commodities in existence today. Okay. And frankly, these are these are self-replenishing. And that in those two wasted commodities is the wisdom of the seniors and the enthusiasm of the youngsters. Okay. The fact of the matter is these two commodities, along with the with the strength and the stamina of the of the of the full adults, of the middle people. Okay, when you combine all of those and work together, we can avoid a staggering amount of problems. Okay, but people have to let go of the idea that they have to be absolutely perfect themselves. Okay, you really don't. Quite frankly, I've yet to find a single person that was perfect. And yes, I absolutely know somebody's going to get upset about this. Okay, but even when you look at the religious icons from the from the past, even they were not perfect. Okay, some of the mo some of the best people I've run into come from a group of people from within a group of people that were absolutely horrendous. But we have to recall. That just because somebody comes from one group of people and was raised by them does not mean they are going to turn out the same way. How many adults do you know of that have done their absolute best to train their kids properly and yet the kids have still turned out and you know when the kids became adults they still turned out to be absolutely horrendous problems in society. Now yes there are many times when parents drop the ball. Lord knows that the number of people in my generation that absolutely drop the ball, okay, is insurmountable. We did not stand our ground and say, look, the education has to stay in place. We've got to teach these people. What we're turning out now is people that have no motivation, no grow, no, no, um, no visual, no, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm pulling a blank. <coughs> they've got no visual, they've got no vision, no motivation, and less hope. You know, we take a look at the number of things that are being broadcast. Everybody's doing this wrong. There's so many shootings around. Well, I'll tell you, here's something I'd love to know. Every time I turn around, Somebody has, has performed another mass shooting. It's blurted all over the all over the world. This massive shooting was blurted out, but I can virtually guarantee, okay, that on with that one day when one shooting takes place, there were at least a hundred weddings around the world. Now, why are we not seeing these statistics? They're not exciting. Probably not for the for the general public, but I will tell you when you think that most people that do this uh, Okay, I saw it posted the other day That a lot of these of these school shootings Are not happening because people want to shoot the people it's because nobody's paying attention Nobody's listening and therefore they are reacting in a very very violent very demonstrative fashion Okay now, that gets them their 15 minutes of news. And, you know, the sad part is the method isn't working. Okay, people are still not getting it through their head that we have to talk to each other. Okay, now all these weddings going on, all these weddings, these birthdays, these celebrations, all of these things are also happening, but nobody talks about them. Why not? Those are the positive things that are happening. Okay, I share some of the positive things I'm going through because of the fact that I'm hoping it will help people understand that in spite of what I've been through, and therefore in spite of what you've been through, okay, you can land on your feet. But it takes effort, it takes focus, 
And sure as shooting, it's going to take some, it is likely to take encouragement from other people. Now, I've played around with various different ideas on how to go about posting. Still not making much headway in the sales of my books. But in all fairness, I haven't put the focused effort into it. Okay, I'm actually surprised by looking where I've gotten and where I've arrived at with the Return to Paradise. I started, like I said, this morning, really starting to write to go through it. And I'm already through 33 pages of it. Okay, and this is something that, you know, again, this is one of those things where I'm looking at going, I come from a very, very financially strapped background. But I finally got it in my head that the only way that's going to change is if I focus on it and do the work myself. I can get all the guidance I can and I ask for. If I don't get my tail feathers off the ground, same as you, if you don't get the tail and get your tail feathers off your chair, you're not going to be successful either because you're the only one in existence that's going to be able to do it. Okay, that's just the way that is. Even this got moved where it shouldn't have been. This little sign here. If you haven't got it up already, get it up and, and set somewhere where you can see it regularly. The most effective place that I've found, okay, is on, like I've got one that is done on cardstock and laminated. It sits on my fridge freezer where everybody that walks into my house, and there ain't many in all fairness, can see it on a regular basis. I have this copy in my office, and I've got a sheet on my front door. And I actually got approached by somebody in the lobby the other day, uh, in my in my um, in my apartment, that asked me. They said they really wanted to meet whoever it was that put that sign on my door, or whoever lived behind that door. Because on my front door, on the on the entrance to my to my apartment, I have the same sign. I am worth it. Those are the four most powerful spoken words I've found in any language. Okay. Regarding rebuilding self-esteem, rebuilding your self-worth, your self-motivation. But you'll notice that term self. And that's why I ended up writing this. Okay. This little book here. Believe in yourself and follow your dreams. You'll notice it's not very big. The backbone, mind you, compared to that, um, you know, if you take a look at the backbone of what I did to change my life around, that's the backbone. Okay. And this was the fire that made it all happen. When you get these two factors into your head, okay, or more to the point, when you actually get them well seated in your heart, you will find you are able to get a lot more accomplished. Okay, but it's going to be up to you. Well, it always has been up to you. Now, where it comes, the other thing we got to look at here. Okay, you take a look at the religious teachings. Whatever spiritual path you're on, most of these religions preach the idea of peace. You know, peace on earth, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, this is said in multiple different fashions. And yet, as far as I understand it, 80% of wars are started because of differences in religion. Now, to me, this means some message is being missed rather drastically. Okay. If you are, if you are following a spiritual guide and they are telling you fear, whatever, you may be listening to the wrong person. Okay. They may be getting the message screwed up. Because I'll tell you, do I believe in God? Absolutely. Do I believe in Christ? Absolutely. Do I respect that other people don't? Absolutely. Fact of the matter is, there is no definitive. You have to follow this path. Okay, yeah, I know. I get flack for that one right off the bat. I was talking to somebody the other day about that, and I asked him, in your opinion, does and did God create everything? He goes, and then the person went, absolutely. I says, great, so what are you blaming Satan for evil for? Well, God didn't create evil. Well, you can't have both. It's kind of like, you know, did you did you do that? 
Well, you know, did you did you make that mess? Well, no. Well, you were the only one here. Well, that's true. Then, you know, the fact of the matter is we have to take responsibility for our own actions. Okay. If you are not willing to take responsibility for your own actions, the real question you have to ask is how are you justifying in your own head that somebody else is to blame for your actions? Okay, I've seen this done for, for ages. I was about to say centuries, which really, when you look at my past lives, it really boils down to a lot longer than that. Okay, but it is time we look in the mirror and go, okay, what am I responsible for? And what do I have control over? Now, I have control over whether I get my eyes to heal. That is working, but again, it really boils down to still use the crutches, still use whatever you require to get ahead, you know, to keep moving forward. Like, my eyes are healing. There is no question. I refuse to let them die altogether. But at the same time, I'm not stupid enough to crawl into a car and try and drive without my glasses. However, like I told the doctor after I had the stroke, if the world's blowing up around me, you can bet I'll take my chances. But it's time that we really take a look at this world and go, okay. If we can, when we choose to start working together, we can make the rest, we can make the rest of our time on earth either akin to heaven or akin to hell. In other words, you can make it a really wonderful place you can get along with the people around you, or you can create a problem for yourself. Okay, this is something you've got to make the decision for. Because if you don't make that decision yourself, there is a massive problem you're going to be dealing with. Okay, it does not function for you to point the, point the finger at somebody else. It's kind of, now, there are situations, like for instance, you know, I gained a little bit of weight the other day. I stepped on the scale because I had been ignoring it, and it's like, oh, not good. Now, can I sit here and blame you for my for my putting on a little weight? Not effectively. I mean, I can point the finger and say it's all your fault. Okay, I can say my you know my view my subscription level isn't high enough, and it's your guy's fault that I don't have it. This doesn't add up. I mean, the reality is, if I did better advertising, if I had a more enticing or more, more, shall we say, um, thought-provoking way of doing things, maybe a funnier way of approaching it, I don't know. Perhaps something different would happen. But that's not me. Okay, from my standpoint, it's real simple. I'm tired at this point of sitting on the sidelines and going, Gee, I hope the world will sort itself out. Frankly, I don't get the feeling without people pointing it out that it is going to straighten itself out. And I'm not about to wait around for my kids to get to my age for them to try and figure out what I did wrong or what I didn't do. Take your pick. Now, with that in mind, I've got a number of things to go. So I will catch up with you again shortly. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.